Remind me, how many kinds of proofs have we looked at under the heading of induction? What was the very first one I showed you? It was a series, wasn't it? What else have we looked at? We looked at divisibility. Um, I did tell you, I alluded to the fact that you could do ones with calculus in it or geometry, okay? This is different again. It's an inequality proof, okay? <laughs> now, every time we look at one, the, the framework stays the same. You always test, assume, prove, explain. Every single time if it's mathematical induction, okay? That's called the principle of mathematical induction, okay? But when you get to the hard step, the proof step, right, it's always a little bit different because the things you're trying to prove are a little bit different, okay? Um, for instance, you know, when we look at divisibility just now, right, they don't give you a statement. So you have to make one up, right? That's different from what you looked at before. Here again, it will be slightly different one more time, okay? At the beginning, it's still the same though. Let's test. First allowed value is? n equals 1. Do be careful with this, by the way. Even though you can sort of get into autopilot on what these are, um, watch out. Firstly, they don't always start at 1. They might start at 0, or they might start at 4, or anything they like. Okay? Secondly, you have to be careful about the rules that the allowable, allowable values take. You know, I don't just write this for kicks, right? Sometimes it's not that. You can have other things. You have a, there are some examples on your sheet. We'll talk about that in a second. What's it look like? Even though you normally start with the left-hand side here, for reasons that will become clear in about two minutes, I'm going to start with the right-hand side. What's it equal to? It's 1 plus 3, which is 4. What is the left-hand side equal to? The left-hand side is 4 to the power of 1, which is 4. Okay, now at this point, what was I seeking to prove? That it's true for the first allowable value. Okay? Now, because I started with the right-hand side and now I'm ending with the left-hand side, here, I can say this. That is greater than or equal to the right-hand side. Subtle difference. If I had started with the left and then done the right, I'd say right-hand side is less than or equal to the left-hand side. I just find it confusing to have the left on the right and the right on the left and the inequality switched around. These are hard enough. Let's just keep things the way they are, okay? No problems, there's a test. What do I assume? I'll just stick my k's in, right? Assume it's true for n equals k, where k is the same kind of number that n is. That's terrible. Uh, so it looks like this. 4 to the k is greater than or equal to 1 plus 3k. Now we get down to our work step. Prove. Okay. Left hand side, no problem. That's just sticking it in. What happens to the right hand side when I um, collect like terms and that kind of thing? This guy's going to become what? 3k plus 3 plus 1. 3k plus 4. This is what I'm looking for. Okay. Now I said there's you know, subtle differences in the different varieties of induction proofs and what happens in this step. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Usually you look at one side and then you work with it and then it, at some point you can put in um, the assumption, right? And you could do it that way. I think it's going to be more straightforward if, for you if you actually start off with the assumption right away, okay? By assumption. 4 to the k is greater than or equal to that, okay? So I already know this is true and now I can start working on it. Now, before I looked at this and I tried to twist and turn it so I could use this. This time, I start here and I'm going to try and twist and turn this so that I get that. Can you see it's a subtle difference? In some ways it's a bit like direct proof, but I'm still assuming things, so it's not exactly the same. Now you tell me, you look at this, what would you say is the most direct way I could go from here to here? Now, you've got two choices because you've got two sides of the inequality, don't you? Okay? If you look at the right-hand side, the difference between that right-hand side and this right-hand side is 3. So I could add 3 to both sides, and one side would be correct, and then I have to work on the other one. Alternatively, I could multiply this side by 4, and then I'll get this. And then I'll have to work with that side and see what I can do. Okay? 
Now, which do you think would be better? Do you think multiplying by 4, or do you think adding 3? Hmm. Well, let's test your theory, shall we? Multiply left-hand side by 4, you get 4 to the k plus 1, sure enough. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side, you get 4 plus 12k. 4 plus 12k. Right. Now, what were we trying to set out to prove? Hmm. This is where I want to end up. I do not have this. So what could I do? Have I done something wrong? You just told me to multiply by 4. It's not negative, so it's not that the inequality went the other way. This is not what I'm trying to prove, is it? And the answer is no, it is not what I'm trying to prove. Guess what? It's better than what I'm trying to prove. Think about this. Think about it. I want to prove that this thing is big. It's bigger than that. Okay? Will you have a look carefully at this thing? 3k plus 4 and 12k plus 4. Right? So it's like, uh, where would my black one go? There it is. Okay? You're like, I want to prove that, you know, some number x is bigger than 10. Okay? This is what I'm setting out to prove. And I do some work, I, I, I use an assumption, and then somehow I prove that it's bigger than 100. You're like, oh no, I haven't proved it. <laughs> <laughs> of course you proved it. And then some, right? If it's bigger than 100, surely it's bigger than 10, right? Yeah. Because 100 is bigger than 10. So here is the way that I will write it, okay? 4 plus 12k, I will say, but 4 plus 12k, right? But this guy is greater than or equal to uh, 3k plus 4, which is what I'm after, right? Now, stop. Why is that? I keep asking this, right? In proofs, why is everything, right? How can I say this? Because it is not always true, right? It's, it's only true because k is a certain kind of number, right? All of you people who are like, I'm in a hurry. I always have to write this. I'm just going to skip it for now so I can do the rest of these 50 questions. Do not skip it because it is crucial to the argument. This is only true because k is a positive integer. Okay? That's why this is bigger than that. If it's negative, it blows up. Okay? So being that that's true, I can say this. This is bigger than this, which in turn is bigger than that. Okay, no, 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 no. Calm down. It's not the squeeze law. Um, because, you know, the, the, these guys, by the way, think about it. You know what these look like, don't you? Like, if I put in an X instead of a K, you could graph these. What's this guy doing? He's going, wee. <laughs> What's this guy doing? He's going, wee, right? This is not the squeeze law. Okay, I know it looks like it because of the inequalities, but it's not. They are not squeezing anything, okay? <laughs> All I've got is a series of inequalities that I, I want these guys, which is evidently true. Okay? Do you see the way it works? If something's bigger than this big number, it's going to be bigger than that smaller number. I'm done. You can explain from there. Okay? What was important? Do your assumption as usual. When you're doing your proof, where do you begin? Unusually, you start with the assumption. You don't need to massage it at all and then stick it in. Just go right off the bat. Think of the quickest way you can get one side of the inequality looking right. Doesn't matter which one, just whichever is going to be most convenient for you to work with. You, you chose correctly. Multiplying by 4 is a better option. You add 3, it's not clear at all. Okay? So there you go. Hope that makes sense. Uh, in case you're wondering, it is easier to generally prove that things are bigger than other things than to prove things are less than other things. Uh, that seems like, what's the difference? Okay? Um, well, it's the same as the difference between these two things. I can prove that, um, I can ask you to prove that A is greater than B. It's actually much easier to prove that the difference between them is positive. Okay? Because I know all kinds of things about positive numbers. They follow lots of rules that I'm very familiar with. This one, not so much. So even though they're equivalent, one is easier than the other. Okay?